If the only place left you call home has been invaded by horrifying titans, what would you do? These terrifying creatures are invading your city, killing your friends and family, and it's up to you to stop them. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the horrifying titans in Attack on Titan Season 2. These kids have no idea that some of them are about to be ripped apart by flesh-eating titans. This young group of scouts sit and waste the days away within the walls of this garrison and they all wonder what the hell they are doing here. The fight is out there, not here, and one of them even thinks about sneaking away to go check on his family that lives in a nearby village. But that's when they get word that Titans have breached the wall yet again, and this head scout leader tells these rookies to go alert all of the nearby towns, telling them to evacuate now. And these guys prepare to die for their home all over again. But this guy's mustache means that he's in charge, and he leads everybody away from the Titans, telling them to avoid all combat and escape as he dives headfirst into battle to give them more time. Okay, this is absolutely horrifying. These scouts were ill-prepared and stood no chance to stop the horde of flesh-eating monsters. They literally had no choice but to avoid the fight. Option 1, using their horses which are bred to be faster than a titan. They run and hide within the nearby trees, but only hiding in the trees that are taller and bigger than the titans chasing them. Or option 2, they ignore orders and stay to help mustache warrior and hide within the building itself, and then flee in the early morning hours, when most of the Titans around would be more dormant and would have given the group an easier time in getting away, assuming they survived the night. Both options are risky. However, as the guardians of the land within these walls, their duty demands that they must warn the citizens of a Titan invasion. But if this was the case, they should have planned it better and should have implemented some sort of primitive alarm system that could have warned the public of the invasion more quickly and effectively than simply sending messengers to each individual town. Because this is not only slow and ineffective, but as you saw, that means no scouts were able to stay behind to help Mustache Warrior because they all had to spread the word. Obviously, they don't have cell phones or two-way radio technology to warn everyone, and this problem shouldn't be too huge of an issue to solve because primitive alarm systems have been in use for a millennia and have taken various forms throughout history. From the use of animals such as dogs, geese, and livestock placed around areas to vocalize when trouble was nearby, to even alarm bells being signaled by scouts placed within towers. And this is one example example of an alarm system that this city could have built. Bells by design are loud as hell, and one example of how loud they can be can be found in the East End District of London, a church known as Bow Church. These bells can be heard when rung throughout the entire borough of Hackney, London, which is over 4.5 miles away from where Bow Church is. If sound can roughly travel one mile every five seconds, not taking into account temperature and humidity, this means that the sounds coming from a bell will be able to reach 4.5 miles away in about 4.5 seconds, or 20 miles in 22.5 seconds. Even the fittest trained endurance horses at most can travel 20 miles in one and a half hours. Now I'm not saying that normally alarm bells can be heard 20 miles away, but you get my point. Using horses as a means of an alert system was inefficient to begin with, because these guys can only alert everyone in the faraway towns as fast as their horses can take them, which isn't nearly as fast as the speed of sound, obviously. The citizens of this place should have built scout towers around the perimeter of all the walls, as well as all over the land with an average gap between towers of about four miles, making sure that each tower would ring at the first sound heard from the bells being rung closest to the wall, which would then create a sort of domino effect, where the bell sound would travel all the way to the towns intended in a much shorter time frame. This means that at the very first sighting of a titan, citizens in towns miles away could have been informed of this within minutes of the titans being spotted. Another method could have been how Pippin lit the signal beacon to call on Rohan for help in the Lord of the Rings Return of the King, by using signal beacons to alert each tower one by one to inform the intended town of any incoming threats. Because they didn't have any pre-installed alarm system of any sort, considering how big of a problem Titans are was a huge mistake to begin with. This mustache warrior is the second top dog in the unit, second only to Captain Levi in skill, and kills off Titan after Titan until only four remain. Suddenly he comes across the most horrifying thing ever, this beast Titan, and it can speak. And this monster steals his gear and leaves him to beg for his life as the rest of the hungry titans eat him alive. Elsewhere, back at the main city, they've just gone through hell trying to save themselves from this female titan, taking her away to experiment on her. But they don't realize that this is only the beginning of more terrifying things to come. And this group suddenly spots a titan within the walls of their decimated city. And this priest orders them to keep their mouths shut and to keep that titan out of sunlight, horrifying everybody here to the bone. Up until now, almost no one knew what these darn near industry 
indestructible walls were made of. And Glasses Girl interrogates the shit out of this priest, but he says nothing, even with the threat of her dropping him from the top of the wall. And this makes her think that all of these walls are made out of Titan flesh. Elsewhere, half-human, half-Titan hybrid Eren sits resting along with his longtime friend Mikasa as they try and recover from the female Titan's wrath that recently wrecked havoc on the city. But suddenly, they get word, along with everybody else, that Titans have breached the walls nearby. These guys then head off to fight the Titans coming from the breach within Wall Rose. But on the way, Glasses Girl thinks that because Eren is half-human, half-Titan, they make a plan for Eren to use his Titan body to somehow fill the hole from within the gate. But there's no guarantee that he'll be able to do it. But he has no choice. If they don't close the wall soon, thousands more Titans will come through and everybody will die. Meanwhile, the survivors of Mustache Warriors group reach their hometown to warn everybody of the incoming Titans. But something is not right, as this kid sees his village already destroyed, but with no bodies in sight. No bodies, except for this one fallen Titan. And it directly speaks to him, saying, Welcome home. Freaking this kid out to his core, right before this officer tells them to keep on moving. In the middle of the night, in total darkness, this group of scouts rides close along the wall rows to find exactly where the breach is. But they eventually run into this other group of scouts, meaning they've come full circle, and no one has found the breach within the wall, and no one knows how the Titans got in, freaking everyone out, and they decide to rest for the night in an abandoned military post nearby. Back with Eren and his crew, they prepare to ride out into Titan territory to stop the incoming Titans, but Glasses Girl again tries to find out what this priest knows about the Titan within the wall, and he finally tells her that a girl within the scout regiment named Krista is the key to the Titan wall secret, and that they need to find her as soon as possible. Eren then realizes that her group is already out on the front lines where the Titans are, which means they need to find her now. But it's too late, because that's when the group of scouts back at the abandoned military outpost realize they've just been found by Titans. The veterans within the group tell the rookies to hide within the castle tower, and they jump off of the top of the tower to fight these flesh-eating beasts head on. Okay, this is freaking nuts, and because of these scouts' stupidity, we are now screwed! It was clear that while checking the wall earlier, the moon was being covered by the clouds, which caused everything around them to be almost pitch black, with the moon coming and going throughout the night. This is what allowed the Titans to surprise these scouts right outside their tower in the first place, because with the moon being covered out there, these scouts couldn't see shit. But then this makes them look so stupid, because if you look at where they are located, what is the one thing that basically advertised their location at that castle tower for the Titans to see? It was their lit fire, the only light source at the top of that tower, with a 360 degree view of everything. And unless something or someone got real close, the scouts sitting next to the fire couldn't see anything anyways. They were begging to have a problem, and all the Titans anywhere nearby could come and see their stupid flame. Because the deeper the darkness, the brighter the light. Now it's not clear up to this point how good the eyesight of Titans are. However, a healthy human eye on average will be able to see a lit candle flame as far as 1.6 miles away if there aren't any obstructions in the way. And these idiots felt the need to light up their location at the tower just like a lighthouse. Their mission was to find the breach in the wall. They had to wait until early morning anyways before they could move on. They had no reason to blast out their location as much as they did. They should have had a group keep watch at the top of the tower and if they're worried about getting cold, then they can just bundle up, deal with it, and have two man shifts, rotating out every 20 to 30 minutes at a time. Also, from the moment that they left the garrison, the rookies should have been given back their ODM gear. This would have doubled their attack power and increases their chances of survival because now the Titans are here and only the scout veterans have their ODM gear. Killing off a handful of Titans will be more than possible for them, but it will not do much to stop the overall horde coming this way. And the fact that we're in well-known Titan territory means that killing all of these monsters is likely going to bring even more attention to ourselves. And we also just noticed that random Titan pass us by. It's something we've never seen before, which means we shouldn't bring more attention to ourselves at this point because we don't know what we're dealing with and the capabilities of that giant Titan, making him a wild card. This is one instance where the veterans need to sacrifice themselves and draw the Titans away from the tower and into the forests, leaving the rookies inside. Now this place looks like it is made out of stone and will usually be built directly on rock or have substantial foundations built underneath the castle to support the overall structure of the foundation. The inclusion of having substantial foundations to support the overall structure usually means that there's a decent chance for a large basement underneath it. And coupled with the fact that this place was built on flat land increases the odds that there is a basement of some sort that the rookies can use to hide it. Because retreating to enclosed spaces away from the Titans 
Dragons line of sight will be one way that they can survive, at least for a little while. So I would order a portion of the scout rookies to make this their top priority in finding out if there is a basement. Once the basement is found, I am ordering all of the rookies to head down into the basement and arm themselves as best as they can. This will allow them to concentrate their attack onto one spot and not get surrounded by titans because they'll have to go through one entranceway in order to get to them. At best, this will allow us to take out most of the horde while minimizing attention being brought to ourselves since we'll be leading the titans deeper underground to get to us. Outside, the veterans kill every single titan bastard that comes their way, slicing and dicing bloody body parts beautifully. But back inside, titans have broken into the tower, climbing up the stairs to the terrified rookies. This stud, Rhina, tries to block the door, struggling and wrestling with this cannibal demon, just before his bud, Berthold, and the rest of the rookies help him out by crashing a literal cannon into it. But just then, another titan sneaks up and tries to eat this kid, but Rhina protects him, letting it tear into his arm while carrying it up the stairs. He is going to jump out of the window, taking the titan down along with him. But just at the last moment, the rest of the rookies manage to kick it off of him, having it fall to its death. Krista then tends to Rhina's wounds, and her kind actions turn him on a little too much. They realize that the scouts fighting outside won't be able to hold out much longer. Suddenly, a massive rock comes hurtling through the sky and crashes into their horses, while a second one comes flying in and crashes into the top of the tower, killing the other two veterans. And they all see dozens more titans incoming and they all start to think that these titan tactics are way too good and they suspect that this beast titan that they just saw earlier outside is somehow ordering this attack from a distance meanwhile the last of the scouts die a gruesome death as more titans surround the castle tower ready to peel the flesh off of these guys' bones just then this girl ymir borrows a knife and jumps off of the top of the tower plunging herself down into a sea of monsters as she injures her hand and turns into a titan this shock everyone, including Rhina and Berthold, who realize that this titan is the same one who ate their friend out in the wild years ago, meaning that Ymir is a murderer, and the group starts to wonder whether she's a friend or a foe. Okay, this is some wiggly diggly type shit. And now our closest ally is another one of those monster cannibal freaks. Now these kiddos up until now have seen Ymir for a while, and from the looks of things, it seems like she is trustworthy. But that's exactly what we thought of the female titan earlier, and she was batshit insane which means we can't trust all of her actions. However, the one thing that will be harder to hide will be Ymir's subconscious tendencies that she's displayed so far. And by observing these, we'll be better able to understand Ymir's overall character and mindset. But to do this, we'll have to observe the little things. Because while the tongue may lie, the nuances and subtleties in someone's character is often far harder to mask. And it's these subtle examples that will provide some direct insight into someone's character. Telltale signs can easily be found in how someone takes food at a buffet or a military military canteen? Do they always take a lot of food? Do they take the last bit of food not caring if there will be enough for the next person? Or do they tend to have one-sided conversations, lack perspective, don't reciprocate effort, or frequently demean and intimidate and bully others? These are the subtle signs of someone that is self-centered, and if we stop and think, we'll be able to remember that from what we've seen of Ymir thus far, it's clear that she naturally is selfish, cynical, uncooperative, and confrontational. Now while all of these traits at first seem not that great, this could also mean that as a self -centered person, we could entice Ymir to properly join our side if she gets what she wants, as it's safe to assume that a self-centered person will only care to look out for themselves, negating the possibility that Ymir could be entirely on the Titan's side if she is not getting what she wants out of them. So if we can find out what she truly wants, this could be our way to lure her into joining our side, at least temporarily. We don't have to be best friends, we just have to prove that keeping us alive will benefit her more than if she decides to kill us and join the Titans. Because remember, we don't know what she knows, nor whose side she's really on, at least yet. And for starters, this means I would keep a close watch on Krista and make sure that she doesn't leave our sight, because she is the one person who Ymir is seemingly taking a liking to so far. Now with all this being said, I still wouldn't waste time just standing around twiddling our thumbs, because trying to convince Ymir to join our side is our last resort. Which means these folks shouldn't sit around and they should start moving, because trying to escape while Ymir keeps these titans busy will give us the time that we need to get away, if by some miracle there are a few horses 
forces that haven't been crushed. Ymir's jaw titan form kills and slaughters the other titans, but she eventually gets pinned down and begins to get eaten alive until Krista screams at her to destroy the tower instead. She breaks free from the titan mob and begins destroying the tower, making it fall on the rest of the titans before she saves the rest of the scouts, telling them to grab on to her hair as the tower comes crashing down. But nothing can stop these abominations and suddenly they burst out of the rubble and pin Ymir's titan form down and the scout rookies can do nothing but look on in sheer horror. But suddenly, Eren and his crew arrive to save Ymir and the rookies. But in the horrifying process, Ymir gets badly injured. The scouts retreat to the top of the wall to recover as Krista tries to convince everybody that Ymir is a good guy. But Glass's girl is skeptical as hell because if they're wrong, she might just be the next horrifying female titan all over again. And she discusses with Mikasa what they told Eren the night before about a horrifying secret involving one of the soldiers in front of us. Because nearby, after all this bloodbath, Reina finally cracks and confesses to Eren the most insane secret ever. The secret that Glasses Girl, Eren, and everybody else already suspected for a while. And he tells Eren to join him. Because Reina admits to Eren that he is in fact the Armored Titan. And mentions that Berthold is the Colossal Titan. The Titans who broke the wall after 100 years of peace. And the ones who caused Eren's mother's death. And mentions that their mission is the extinction of mankind itself. Eren tries to keep his cool, but at the last minute, his calm face breaks, and Reiner spots this. Mikasa lunges in for the kill, but it's no use, and this causes the two to begin the most insane titan transformation in history. And these two former scouts reveal their true, horrifying titan forms, and everybody prepares for battle yet again. Okay, this is some diagonally cut peanut butter on toast type crap. What Glasses Girl told Eren the night before was that these two titan transformers, Reina and Bertolt, came from the same area as the female titan, and were close with her growing up, despite the fact that they almost never spoke to each other during training or at the academy. And in trying to take down the female titan earlier, Glasses Girl thinks that these two dudes passed on information to the female titan, and that's how she found Eren in the first place. Now knowing all of this circumstantial evidence makes it a little surprising how they left Eren alone long enough for him to mess up and get discovered by these two guys. Because if we have to operate on probabilities, it was quite probable that Bertolt and Reina would have needed Eren to some degree. Where that they would have needed him to join forces with them or take him out as the only allied titan member of the scouts. As their only trump card, Eren was most likely the target for Bertholdt and Reina to confront, and these scouts should have done their darnest to try and keep him apart from those two, because knowing about their terrifying secret was their only trump card. And if they cleverly and purposely kept Eren away from these two, whether that would have been by pretending to reprimand Eren, taking him away, or forcing him on an expedient mission away from this location, the scouts could have kept up the illusion that these these two titans were still leading them on. They rushed it and got sloppy, and this is what led Eren to getting discovered, which makes sense, cause this guy's a terrible liar. Also, Mikasa knows that Reina is the better fighter, and even then she failed to take Reina out. Hell, the distance that she was when Reina was discovered was unnecessary, cause knowing what she knew, she should have been on Reina's ass nearby from the start. These two titans explode into existence, along with an enraged titan form Eren, and the scouts can do nothing but watch, as the colossal titan throws Yumi right into its mouth. They try to kill it, but it's no use because this monster unleashes waves of scalding hot steam that shields itself from the scouts. And with no way to kill it, they wait out its defenses as they watch Eren fight the horrifying armored titan head on. Mikasa tries to slice open the nape of its neck, a titan's one weakness, but her blades break instantly. Getting absolutely pummeled by the armored titan, Eren thinks fast. Utilizing grappling and submission techniques, he brings the armored titan down to the ground, pinning the armored titan into submission. And breaks off its entire arm. The armored titan gets up and then expels some of its armor, becoming much lighter and faster, which gives Mikasa a clue as to how to defeat it. Cutting the weak points at the titan's joints in between the armor, she quickly gets to work and slices the armor's titan's weak points and helps Eren weaken it just enough for him to grapple it down onto the ground again. But this time he doesn't let go and begins squeezing the life right out of it like there's no tomorrow. But that's when these scouts witness the most horrifying trick ever, because the armored titan shifts Eren nearer to the wall as he yells out for the Colossal Titan to help, and the Colossal Titan comes crashing down onto Eren himself. And the two monsters kidnap Eren's body by tearing it from his Titan form, and leaves everyone injured and beaten down, escaping off into the forest. Okay, this has officially become the biggest crapshoot since the 2022 Oscars, but this battle from the get-go was flawed. Eren is the most important tactical asset that the scouts have, and they should have protected him better. Glasses Girl should have left one group to keep Berthold busy and then order the rest of the entire scout squad to attack Reina along.
along with Eren, because Bertolt probably can't keep up this steam power forever. And then it would be three to four people versus one, while the rest of the scouts and Eren take on Reina. If I was Glass's girl, I would observe that the Colossal Titan's armor does not cover every square inch of its body. There are exposed areas where the plates of armor do not touch. I would order all of my scouts to attack these spots in coordination with Eren's attacks, which to be brutally honest, kind of sucked. Eren from what we saw simply threw haymakers like he had all the time in the world, despite the fact that each of his punches didn't do shit. And while grappling was a solid move on his part, this was risky as hell because it meant getting close to this dude while he had a chance to lay one, if not more strikes on him. And this guy's clearly a striker and the better fighter. Because I mean, look at this guy. He's literally built like a brick shit house. And since Eren was fighting out in the open and in not any type of confined space, this means that the striker, aka the armored titan, had way more of a chance at beating him where he stood. By having the scouts assist and keep the armored titan busy, this would allow Eren to do what he should have done. Eren is a human titan hybrid, just like Reina and Berthold, which means that he would have been familiar with managing his energy expenditure as a large animal. And in terms of energy metabolism, the bigger the animal, the more energy they expend. Now, while larger animals animals like elephants and presumably these titans have adapted to having lower metabolic rates, which essentially means that even though they use up more energy, they're also more efficient at managing their energy. But even then, this still means that Eren could have played this to his advantage, choosing to antagonize and evade possible strikes that the armored titan threw at him, eventually making him use up all of his energy. Because titan or not, striking in general uses up a lot of energy. Because just minutes before, we saw Reiner ask Eren to join him, which means that we already knew that this guy would not leave until he caught us. And this means that Eren could have taken his time with this battle and should have taken advantage of the Armored Titan's conditioning, because like in combat sports, he should have tried to gas out his opponent. This is the reason why boxers and mixed martial artists focus so much on conditioning over strength, because while being able to throw any volume of strikes without succumbing to fatigue is important, forcing the Armored Titan to throw punches all day at us would have meant that we would have tired him out and made him deplete any energy that he would have had, making it even easier easier for the scouts and Eren to take him down and have Eren subdue the armored titan with the grappling techniques. Hours later, the rest of the squad recovers from the terrifying events that just happened as Mikasa awakens in fright, and Armin tells her that Eren has been kidnapped, and they're waiting for reinforcements and horses before they can go after him, causing everyone to be all droopy and sad as balls, but this guy tells everybody to cheer up and says that Eren is a fighter, and this totally not paraphrased line motivates the shit out of these two, along with the rest of the recovered squad, who now declare Reina and Bertholdt to be enemies of the state, which means they won't stop chasing them until they are captured. Injured Glasses Girl then tells the squad that she suspects that the two titans are already exhausted and have likely have taken a break nearby to recharge their titan abilities, which means that while they rest, these scouts still have a chance to get them. But she mentions that they've headed deep into titan territory, an area swarming with horrifying flesh-eating titans, and warns everybody that they might not make it back home because what lies ahead of these scouts is truly terrifying. The group suits up and heads out to save Eren and capture these two two titans. Meanwhile, Eren finally wakes up badly damaged, along with Ymir in the same boat as him. He looks up and sees an exhausted Reina and Berthold, who have taken their ODM gear, and tells them that they're too damaged to turn into titans, and that they're surrounded by titans below them, just waiting for the chance to eat them, making the possibility of escaping impossible. Reina then says that they have a plan to take these two back to their hometown during the night, when most of the titans will not be as active. Eren gets enraged and threatens to kill them all, but Reina tells him to save his breath because he's gonna need it. Okay, right now we're in some deep shit. Eren and Ymir aren't safe. It's just them against Reina, Bertolt, and the Titans right below them, just waiting for the chance to tear them apart and use their bones as toothpicks. It's unlikely they're ever going to make it out of this forest alive with so many Titans nearby. Eren has stumped for hands, Ymir is injured, and we don't have any horses. Right now, as much as it sucks, we only have one thing on our side, potentially, and that's Ymir. Because Reina and Bertolt are currently the only ones with ODM gear, but they're out of energy and aren't able to turn into titans. And knowing the importance of Eren and how much the scouts value him, it's beyond certain that the scouts will be looking for him, which means we don't need to run, but simply buy time. I would try and convince Ymir to join our side for starters, since she at the moment is more capable than us. And again, she isn't loyal to any one person, as long as she gets what she wants. Reina as well is clearly the one with temper issues and seems to be 
a little mentally fragile, so I think it wouldn't be impossible to piss him off to the point that he tries to come close to show us who's boss. And once he gets close enough, this is when we could try and tag team him with Ymir, subduing him enough to either where we steal his ODM gear or get his gear off of him and throw it down towards the Titans. And even if Bertolt still has his ODM gear by the end of this, he won't be able to save everyone, meaning we'll have effectively trapped everyone here, buying us more time until the scouts come to rescue us. As Eren loses his shit, Ymir chimes in and mentions that she thinks the Beast Titan from earlier is the one who's responsible for the recent Titan infestation. She and Eren then notice Reina starting to talk and act weird to the point that they realize he's developed almost a split personality. He's been undercover serving as a soldier for so long he doesn't know whose side he's on anymore. But Bertolt tells him to cool it and he suddenly snaps back to normal like a true psycho. Reina then tells Ymir to join their side and that they'll forgive her for eating their friend years ago and mentions that if she joins them she'll rescue her close friend Krista to keep her safe making this a tough deal to turn down. So she accepts and suddenly they then all see in the distance green smoke which means the scouts are closing in. Berthold and Reina then beat up Eren and try to escape with the two but in the madness Ymir sees Krista in the distance within the scouts and she tells Reina that now's their chance to save her but Reina tells her that they'll come back later for her as in their current condition they're not strong enough to take on all of the scouts but Ymir's got some sweet shit between Krista and her and forces Berthold to crash telling these two scout traders that her titan form is meant for this environment and that if she turns on them they won't be able to stop her. She demands that if they want her to join their side they're going to need to rescue Krista now or else and so the two are forced to agree. As the scouts begin to close in they notice something is not right because Berthold and Reina are nowhere to be found only Ymir and this skinhead dude asks what she's doing just hanging around on a tree but that's when Armin notices that Ymir is looking around for someone and he sees her spot Krista but before he can do anything Ymir snatches up Krista and eats her and she makes a run for it meeting back up with Berthold and Reina nearby and Reina turns back into the armored titan and helps all of them escape from the scouts forcing Mikasa to stand by and watch in the distance. Okay we now have a real problem because now our worst enemy has all of our trump cards but the one thing I don't get is why they let arguably the second most important person there aside from Eren near the front lines. I'm talking about Krista or Historia if you prefer. Based on what happened when we discovered that Ymir was a titan it was painfully obvious how close Krista was to Ymir based on how she was talking to her on the tower and Skinhead was the only person who was present at the tower and now is riding with the scouts meaning he should have relayed this information to the scouts beforehand. It's unclear exactly whose side Ymir is on. However based on how alert the city must have been from the disaster of the female titan they should have never trusted Ymir to begin with and used as much caution with her as they did when they first found out that Eren was a titan. This means that they should have found a way to use Krista as bait on the off chance that Ymir turned out to be against them because without Eren Krista is the only thing they had left to lure Ymir in. Now nothing may come from this as we saw that Reina didn't even want to go back for her. However bringing her along as a plus one when we literally had dozens of scouts already as backup makes no sense and in reality they should have kept Krista away from the front lines in the first place. This tactic would have likely forced Ymir to stay with us and would have forced Reina and Berthold to abandon Ymir entirely in order to not get caught. You'd think after the female titan fiasco that these guys would have learned their lesson by now. Helpless as Eren gets taken away. The scouts rush like hell to get Eren back because the future of humanity rests in his hands. Suddenly titans behind them show up and start charging after them. They can't turn back. Meanwhile on the armored titan Ymir spits Krista out and she reacts in shock that her best friend is siding with the enemy. But Ymir pops out and tells her that she needs to come with them otherwise they'll both be killed and that they will never be truly safe from the horrors of the titans within their city. But Krista thinks she's crazy and tells her that she will always be her friend and that it's not too late to turn back. But suddenly the shit show begins. The scouts catch up and try swiping Eren from Berthold's grip. Mikasa slices Ymir's eye as the armored titan shields Berthold and Eren within its hands and the rest of the scouts try to get him out. Mikasa then gets up close and personal with Ymir's horrifying titan form and Krista then tries to make Mikasa feel bad for Ymir's situation and tells Ymir to not fight back but Mikasa doesn't give two shits and is more than willing to kill Ymir right here and now if she decides to turn against them. Meanwhile the scouts try to get Eren out and make Berthold feel bad about betraying his own kind causing him to go full on crazy and says that someone needs to spill blood for change to happen making this guy one of the most dangerous human beings alive right now. Suddenly even more titans come from the front and all of the scouts fall back because 
all hell is about to break loose. The armored titan breaks through all of the hungry titans as they try to eat the humans on top of him. The scouts are shocked at the madness and even say, is this hell? But Commander Erwin flies by them on his horse, leading a horde of hungry titans to the armored titan Ymir and Berthold location. He intends to use the titan's bloodlust as a means of distraction in order to free Eren. Commander Erwin orders his troops to charge into what could be the very last fight of their lives, and just then a titan comes in and eats his entire arm whole, dragging him away while he continues to give orders like a frickin' stud. Dozens of scouts get their flesh eaten in seconds as they try to ride through the sea of titans. The armored titan also finally uses his hands to get the other titans off of him, exposing Berthold and Eren. And finally, Armin manages to get under Berthold's skin, saying that they're doing horrifying experiments on Annie as they speak, pissing off the two traitors to the core. And Commander Erwin shows up out of nowhere half dead and frees Eren before continuing his badassery. And Mikasa and the scouts run away, also saving Krista in the process and making her realize that Ymir is lying to her about everything. But the armored titan in anger starts throwing titans, killing more scouts in the distance and stopping Mikasa and Eren dead in their tracks. And then they come across the same titan that ate Eren's mother, horrifying them both to the bone. Okay, this is some Harlem Globetrotter slam dunk type bullcrap. These scouts, it seems like they don't have a brain. Who's the most important person here? Eren. So why didn't they provide him with any means to protect himself? When they first got back, they were clearly in possession of some ODM gear, of which they could have just given to him, which would have made him at least somewhat more self-sufficient. Yet they chose not to. And now, as predicted, he's more of a liability than an asset. And this guy, he failed to save Eren's mother five years ago to this very same Titan. There was absolutely no reason for him to play the hero card, and instead of simply blocking that Titan hand and going for the home run and taking this Titan out all on his own, he should have taken advantage of the situation and should have used that split second opportunity to save Eren, opting to swing him up to the nearby trees rather than trying to fight this Titan head on. Mikasa had her own gear anyways, and this guy knew that Eren was the most important person to the mission, meaning this is one of those instances where fleeing would have been the better choice than fighting. This guy, I admire his desire for revenge and redemption, but come on, he let his emotions and hero complex get the best of him, and he paid the ultimate price. Eren quickly gets freed by Mikasa, just as he watches one of his dear friends get caught and helplessly gets picked up. He tries to turn into a titan, but nothing happens, forcing Eren to watch as his fellow friend is eaten alive, thanks to him yet again being a useless piece of turd. This breaks Eren for a sec, until Mikasa snaps him out of it, boosting Eren's confidence, and he yells out and unleashes a new power, causing all titans nearby to attack this titan and even burn Holt and Reina. This is why these two wanted to capture him, because Eren has something that can change everything. The scouts make a run for it, and Ymir even switches sides again and saves Krista before staying behind to hold off Bertholdt and Reina. Later, the scouts find out, thanks to Glasses Girl, that the Titans found at Skinhead's village appear to be humans and residents of the village itself, meaning that these Titans could be in fact human. Elsewhere, they have no idea that outside of the wall Maria lies the Beast Titan and this guy, who has even more terrifying plans for this city soon to come. But what do you think about Attack on Titan Season 2? Let us know what you like and what you didn't like. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, and as always, don't forget to check out our social media and our How to Beat playlist.